What's your interpretation? <laughs> discussion went into it, like, I mean, I think Michael's perfect for the role, and I think he did an amazing job. Yeah, one thing I would say in terms of a visual interpretation is I think some of the Scott Pilgrim kind of very manga expressive stuff is very difficult to do on screen, um, you know, so it kind of had to be grounded a little more, like, and sometimes when you see kind of... Um, like films that go full kind of uh, <coughs> Dragon Ball Z. If you see, films, <laughs> um, but like it's it's difficult to pull that off. Like stuff that you can do in animation that you can't do in live action. There's things that Brian can do on the page that we can't do live action, and vice versa. So th that came into it as well, I guess. You know, that that was an element. But um, I think you're a bit rude. Get out. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thank you. I appreciate it. We, we appreciate it. We wouldn't be here at three o'clock in the fucking morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, let's go over here, um, lady. Yeah. in terms of definitely the, you know, kind of the Japanese games. There seems to be some ninja guiding in the last fight. There seems to be some ninja guiding in the last fight. Well, the thing is sometimes, sometimes, like, uh, I, I will admit that sometimes the, the VFX guys have their own kind of, like, sort of separate agenda. So I, I would say I was responsible <laughs> for, like, the, the uh, Soul Calibur sort of Ivy thing kind of came out of, like, the kind of the geeks on the design team coming out. We had it written, but... And it, the way it kind of came out was as a reference to that game. So it was more than one brain on it. Obviously, Brian and Liam Alley had a bunch. But um, my favorite games, I mean, I grew up uh, in Britain, so I had the ZX Spectrum, which was a, uh, a home computer. And there was a game on there that I was obsessed with when I was about eight called Night Law. Law uh, Night spelled with a K, and Law spelled L O R E. And if you look on YouTube, you can see an empty, like an emulation of it. Uh, and that, that was a big game for me. In terms of American games, I used to like Rampage. Yeah. <laughs> Rampage is a good one. Okay, let, I think probably everyone's going to answer for this. Michael, you've got some answers for this. Uh, oh, both. Favorite games? Yeah. Well, Contra. Contra. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We probably spent over 100 hours playing Contra during the filming of this. 
Anybody here got past the eels? <laughs> <laughs> Not very many, though. Not very many, I will tell you. Mega Man. Mega Man. Yeah. Yeah. Metroid. Yeah. Duck Count. It was probably uh, Mega Man and also Prince of Persia on the PC. <laughs> if, can you, if, if you really should have been up for that part, can you say very loud into your mic, Give me the dagger! Give me the dagger! <laughs> I get kind of obsessed by the trailer lines that are in trailers, that the ones that, if you see the TV spots, you know if a Prince of Persia spot, even if it's five seconds long, is going to go, Give me the dagger! <laughs> it's almost better than release the Kraken. <laughs> Release the Kraken. I said that for about two months straight. Release the Kraken. Give me the dagger. The one from Robin Hood. Uh, I consider him an outlaw! <laughs> There's been some great trailer lines this year, I tell you. I can't remember any other. I think the outlaw one is the best. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Nicole, come on. You, 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 you were in a Sega commercial, for God's sakes. <laughs> it's true. Tell us about that. Hello, fellas. I was in a Sega commercial for Sonic Spinball. Oh, and my eyes uh, spun around and they put, put my head in a vise, an actual vise, and my eye, jump me, and my eyes, uh, it wasn't casino, and my eyes spun around in, in separate directions. Uh, they shot, you know, both I remember that. and did yeah. some kind of overlay. Bill could tell you more about how an effect like that works. <laughs> I can't. Uh, and at the end I went, Sega! And that was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, the high point of my entire life. Uh, just to follow up Michael's uh, Contra story quickly, we played for about 100 hours, then Michael hung out with Kieran, and they played one game uh, without the cheat and beat it, so. <laughs> I am an asshole. <laughs> Bill, do you have a favorite video game? You play Angry Birds now. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> I compete against Bill's son on Q Rank. I see him on there every morning. Does anybody play Q Rank? Yeah, do it. <laughs> I'll get you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, okay, let's have another question. Lady there. Okay, there's a couple. I can't name all of them, and sometimes people will kind of tell me ones that I've forgotten about themselves, but the ones for one and five and six are pretty kind of like, um, one of them is the fact that like sort of uh, Matthew Patel uses like a single finger all the time. Wallace Wells said it's that one guy, but mostly it's the fact that he has like a one kind of rank on his like uh, epaulet. What do you call epaulet? What do you call it? Chevron. chevron. It's a chevron. He has one chevron on his, on his thing. In the book he has two, but we changed it to one, so he would be number one. Uh, the, ja the twins one, there's, a co the cost there's costume ones on the twins. There's Starburst on the kind of Rising Sun has five, and the other one has uh, six studs, I think. But the one, this is the geekiest one. Does anybody know what the five and six are? I know you know. What is it? The 11. It's the 11. It's because when they turn up their amps, they turn it to the Japanese for 11. And you see a close-up of it. It goes to 11 in Japanese. Five and six together is 11. That's super, super geeky. <laughs> There you go. There's more. I can't. There are some more. There's some more ones with, like I guess, like two and three and seven have the most, and one and five and six have the least. Uh, Man in the middle. Yes. Uh, thank you all for being here. It's so late. Um, and I was wondering for all of you, uh, number one tip for young filmmakers. You're asking us. <laughs> 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 
think, uh, uh, basically, uh, when I grew up doing it and I started making amateur films and I grew up in the country, like I went to you know the UK equivalent of public school, I didn't know anybody in the film industry and I just, um, you know, 